All right. So this little session's on what, what we can actually see under the microscope. As I said before, you're unclear what you were drawing. Some of you were drawing dirt and little scribbles, uh, and you weren't sure whether you're looking at a whole organism or just cells. So we're going to go through that now so that when you continue with your drawing next period, um, you'll be pretty clear on what you're looking at and how, how to draw it. I'm also going to put this, I'm going to export this as a video and put it on YouTube, and I'll give you the website to go to YouTube at home, and you can watch it any time you like and share it. Uh, Sorry? I might place comments. Yeah, you can place comments. That'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what I've just said. Um, hopefully you'll become familiar with what you're seeing under the microscope. Um, most of the slides you used last week, uh, or sorry, on Wednesday, they were all uh, stained. Now, why, why would we stain those samples that we've got? Anyone got an idea? So you can see it better, yep. What? The slides, the actual samples we had on those microscope slides. Different chemicals were put on there to stain the tissue. Yeah, if, if we had a plant specimen, we could have put iodide, iodine on it, which is a brown chemical, but that would make certain things in the cell blue, like the nucleus would become a blue colour. Otherwise, the nucleus is not dark like in the drawings, you just can't see it. So, with all, all because we're sectioning them so thin, um, a stem of a tree, we're cutting it, so that's the stem like that, and we're cutting it like this. We're cutting such a thin, thin section, only a cell deep. When you put the light through it, it's just clear, and you can't really see it at all. The stains mean that it, 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 it's coloured. Different parts of the cell will be coloured, or different tissue types, like muscle or um, connective tissue, will be a different colour, or the nucleus, so we can actually see them. Otherwise, we wouldn't see much at all. And, of course, that's the answer I've just put there. They're transparent. You can't see them, most of them. Because it doesn't has no colour. It's like looking through that window. If I was to throw paint on that window, you'd be able to see that window. But you don't, unless there's dirt on it. It's got no colour. Yes? Practice what? No, because I'm going to, you can if you want to write it down, but I'm going to, you know, put it on YouTube so you can write it down later. But if you want to write it down now, it's a good learning strategy because otherwise you're going to have to, you might want to do it later when you're revising. You've got to go and watch this whole thing again and flick through it to get the important bits. All right. Now, you don't have to draw this. I'd rather you just listen, actually, and understand. And if you need to write it down, you can come back to it later. Or if you're happy to list it, all my year 11s complain that I'm always talking when they're trying to write. And I hate waiting around half an hour for you guys to talk. So I'd rather explain it clearly at the beginning. And um, if you want to write it, I'll just leave it on the up for you to have, flick through later. Or you can get it off YouTube or somewhere else. All right. So when we're cutting things up, um, on the left here is like when you've got a set so that looks like asparagus. If you've got to section that and look at it under the microscope, on the left would be a transverse section, and that's if it's growing up like that, you cut it down the middle and cut really thin slices of it, long ways, and you, then you can see what's happening all the way up the trunk of, or the stem. On the right, where you see the little green wedges, all right, they're cut this way and then pulled out. Now, I wish I had a laser pointer, and I'm going to get one, so when I do this, I don't have to keep climbing up here. I hate going up here. So I can shine it in your eyes, yeah. So these ones, you can see a little wedge has been cut out there. And, it's, uh, and when you look in the microscope, you'd be looking down that way. And so, and often we don't cut them into quarters. We normally have a whole circle when we look under the microscope. So we just cut out a whole slice like that. Really, really thin. You know, only a layer, a cell, probably one or one and a half, a couple of layers thick. And then we whack it under the microscope. And we have a look at it. And we stain it first, and then we put it under the microscope, and then we look at it. Now, if we were to section a human, and this is of a, of a dead human, um, that's what it would look like. There's obviously the head on the left, cut through here at eye level, and on the right is cut through um, his legs. Now, this guy was a, 
a criminal in the USA, and when he died, he decided to donate his body to this um, to this project where they would freeze him and they would put him in some sort of gel, um, probably wax, because they normally embed in wax. And then they would slot, they had all cameras and everything set up, and then they sliced him one millimetre at a time, all the way through, right through to his body, so that and took a photo each time. And then they were able to piece together piece together this. And obviously it's not microscopic. This is like life size. It didn't use a microscope. Just use a digital camera. Any volunteers? And they did a woman as well. Now interestingly you can find this online. I can't remember what it's called. But if you look, you should be able to find it. I found it. I looked up cross section of a human and I got to this site. And I used to be able to buy a DVD and ROMs and they've probably done shows on TV about it. Um, and you can work all the way through the whole body of which you can see him on the inside there. And he's only got, interestingly, he's, he lost a testicle early in life. So if you do have a look, you'll, he's got one missing. <laughs> but he obviously didn't worry because he let, he let them do this to him. <laughs> now a few years later they also did a, a woman, a woman, a woman. And they sectioned her as well. Now this guy actually, he's got huge muscles in his legs there. Because he was in jail, all he did, did was work out all day. And same with behind his neck here, if you have a look on, on, online, huge muscles behind the neck, like, a, like something out of um, one of those computer games that you actually play. Half-Life or something. I'm not sure if he was executed, I, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah here. I hope this hasn't frozen on me. This, this is muscle tissue here. This would be the bone, and this would be the skin and fat tissue, because there's usually a layer of fat under the skin. And here there's all sorts of different organs. Obviously this is part of the brain, cerebellum. You've got muscles here, muscles that make the eyes move, just there as well. All right, now this is lung tissue. So now we're getting to what you would see under a microscope at times 40. Uh, good question. I actually got, I've got these slides. I've got them from the Victorian Institute of Forensic Medicine in the city. I took six weeks leave and worked at that forensic centre there to, 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 to learn more about forensic science. And they gave me a whole bunch of samples from people who had died in different circumstances that they had to analyse. And this is a photograph I took of one of them. And here, what you can see is these air pockets. What do you think these air holes are? Where there's nothing. It's just clear. What could that be in the lungs? The air sacs or alveoli, that's right. And the larger ones, maybe what could they be? It doesn't like this. Well, that's all right. Um, what do you think the larger ones are over here, the larger? If, if the small ones are probably alveoli, what would the larger ones be? Big alveoli. Thanks for that. Sorry? Bronchioles. Vacuoles. Now that's inside the cell, but a good idea. Good, good try. Now what it would be would be the trapeas or the, the tiny little um, tubes that feed down into those, into those alveoli. Alright? So the air would go in here and then the oxygen and the carbon dioxide would move from the air into your body tissue and then be transported around. Now you can see, if you look carefully, Tiny blue dots. What do you think the tiny blue dots are in all this tissue here? Tar. Tar. Good question. No, it's not actually tar. And I do have a sample of someone that died in a fire. And there is actually, um, in the spaces here, you can see that there is smoke. Where? Not, I haven't put it on this PowerPoint, but I do have a photo here. Um, maybe I'll add it to the, show you another time. Well, they actually died in a fire. If there was smoke in the alveoli and the tracheas here and that, bronchi, I think, bronchi is, I can't remember what they're called now. Does that mean they're alive or dead when they die? <laughs> alive or dead when they're in the fire? Yeah. Alive, why would that be? Because they had to breathe that smoke in, that's right. So, from that case, they would have known that person was alive when that fire occurred. They weren't dead. Now that doesn't mean somebody, there might have been a house fire and some old lady was stuck there or maybe someone was unconscious when the fire occurred. 